welcome back to the station it is and we've got quite a well we've got some new stuff in this patch that just came around either today or yesterday so uh, i want to cover that this episode it is to do with hydroponics though but before we get to the new stuff the new exciting shiny stuff i wanted to just uh, come back to a bit of feedback just um just a bit of follow-up from the last episode a few mistakes i made in here and a few suggestions that people have made uh first of all uh you remember when i did the solar panels and I put the output, and let's go over to the solar panels just so I show you what I mean. Oh, here we go. So our code is running on this here. And yes, I haven't quite cleaned up these, these cables yet. I know, I will do it. <laughs> so our code is running on here. And you remember I set these two, to two memory chips over here, which are then used by batch writers. That's pretty much the only way to do this kind of thing where you need a batch writer. I want to write to all of these solar panels, but that's not necessarily the case in the case of hydroponics. And when that's the case, uh, that we have this kind of issue, if we just want to use writers or readers, we don't even need the logic chip because we should be able to attach these directly to, for example, this device. And then we can set directly on that device, whether it's set to on or off, you know, instead of saying um, setting down here, uh, scroll down, um, setting here, and that's the base device, but here, D1, setting zero, we just set that to, to be the on uh, attribute, and then we'd set it to zero or one, okay? So that avoids the need for this. But while you're actually um, proving the circuit, it's handy having these memory units here because you can just quickly look, looking all over your base, have a look what the various states are when you're actually looking at the code. You can also go to stationeering.com and there is a circuit simulator in there that, uh, well, an integrated circuit editor simulator in there. So you can write your code directly on the website and copy and paste it in when you're done. All right, so let's look, take a look at the code now and uh, just the feedback on that that we got from various people. So first of all, uh, labels, they're gone. <laughs> I was mistaking them for just being the same as aliases, but for the output pins, they're not at all. They just changed the name of the output pins. So all they've now done uh, in the code is they've changed it so that aliases, if they're pointing at an output pin or an input pin, whatever you actually want to call them, the things on the physical base unit, um, they'll also change the labels. So you don't have to worry about a separate label command, which is great because then I can just change all those labels to aliases, which is what I did up here. All right, so the code is pretty much the same here, I think. I don't think I've changed anything else. No, but we are going to change some other things because there was some feedback. So first of all, let's just get rid of... In fact, I'm going to just reuse this line and we're going to... Yeah, let's let me just use one possible option. So one operator that I didn't use previously is called SLT or store less than, I assume. And you basically give it a destination. So let's say, I'm not sure if we can store directly on the DB. If we can't, then we can put it to a register and then store it, um, you know, below that. So that's not much of an issue. Um, but let's just give it a try first. And uh, we also want then to do the comparison. So what we're basically doing here is like a try, I think it's called a trinary operator, but um, we're basically comparing, it's not, not quite the same. Anyway. <laughs> Let's get to the actual code. So let's just compare one thing less than another. So is the temperature less than um, the temperature you want to compare to? So this sort of thing here, these two lines, let's see if we can just replace that with a single line. So uh, F temperature and 303. Now I'm just going to delete this line for a start. And if this doesn't work, then we'll need, probably need to add it back. But I just want to test it. So uh, a destination. Is this less than this? Should be zero, I think, if it works. Uh, it's just failed because it's not actually writing, it seems. Or in fact, it is writing just the current temperature. That may have been what I did before. Let's just actually change this and write this to something internal. So let's just say R6, uh, oops, R6, something like that. And then we will just write as we did before because yeah, if we do DB there, it would have to be DB and then setting, and that wouldn't work otherwise. So let's actually just do this the other, other way around. So store then in the um, DB, which is the, the base device, setting, and then R6. 
confirm export and what have we got zero good that's correct because it is essentially um it is less than uh, sorry <laughs> is the temperature less than 303 no it isn't uh so we are storing zero because that's the result of this so if this is evaluated to true here uh let's just swap these around so if we just say 303 is 303 less than f temperature okay whoops i really wish it would uh, do that consistently or consistently correctly i should say let's export that and one so you can do that to get a zero and one out uh, of this without any of this branching okay so that is a nice option sometimes you might not be able to do that though so if you wanted to do this another way um people were saying you could do this by doing something along the lines of uh let's just see um we could just change this around to say store ob cool setting zero as the first line and then we can delete it from here and what's basically going to happen is every time it comes through it sets it to zero and then this comes through and then uh, we'll then jump two lines or something along those lines and uh, it would skip one line essentially if if that was the case uh, but in this case we don't need to do any of that i think because this solution with slt actually works pretty well so we can just shorten this whole thing i think and get the actual value we want which is nice and I'm just outputting it to the DB, but we can easily output that to uh, D1 or OB cool. So OB cool setting R6. And are we set this the right way around? We want to turn something on. So it needs to be true if the temperature is, if it's, uh, is the temperature less than 303? No, this is the right way around. So it's 303 less than the temperature. Yes, it is. So it's a true. So we'll set that to basically one and we should get that out there we go and that should be working um easy way to tell just is just to reverse this i'm just going to ignore the i'm just going to ignore the the deleting of, of my nice lines just to show that and you'll see it's changed to zero so yeah that's nice uh and basically improvement on the previous one thanks to i think it's eric who actually suggested that one so yeah we will just change this back over so 303 f temperature and then we have that going much nicer but of course we don't get to demonstrate branching but mm, yeah it's still fine so this is quite nice now i do i do like this whole program at least for that one problem however in this patch we got a new piece of equipment and i'm not printed out yet i wanted to see what i thought of it at the same time as you saw it as well so we'll see uh, i've got it queued up in here uh called the automated hydroponics <laughs> i build a big room they come out with something that that may well be entirely automated let's give this a go so i'm gonna need some more electrum and some silicon there's some silicon there and uh, do i have an oh it's probably rolled away over here somewhere uh or oh, i'd put it in a machine uh, contents, no. Iron, where's the electrum? I do have it somewhere. Let's just put silicon in first. Uh, it was over here, I'm almost sure. Unless I used it. Oh, that would be awful if I've used it all. It's entirely possible though. Uh, iron, solder. You know, I could have used it. And that's going to be really inconvenient because the machine I would use to make more would be the heating room, which I turned off to save power. Uh, so it's, it's over there. Oh, dear. Uh, let's just turn the power back on and let's just see if... Oh, turn the power back on and then turn my headlamp on because that's run out of battery again, as normal. I don't have anything anywhere else, do I? I don't think so. Fine, let us let me go and make that and we'll come back. Okay, now I haven't actually showed Electrum in the Pure Gas Furnace, but the principle is no different than steel, which I have shown before. We need to get this up to a certain amount of pressure and temperature. I've put equal amounts of gold and silver in here uh, for what should be 40 Gs of Electrum. 
and I've started it heating up and it's now up to about 520 degrees in the tank a little bit higher than that in the room but it's the tank really we want to take care of remember though that the temperature in the furnace is going to be below this so the temperature needed for electrum is only 700 k uh which if you take that off um 700 so it's 500 430 celsius or there are thereabouts so you think well you got plenty there you got you know only the like 90 degrees on top of that but um as it turns out when we actually open this to the furnace we don't quite get this temperature we do get quite a significant drop as the furnishes the, the furniture as the furnace starts filling with uh, hot gas so you know let's let's try it now it should be okay ish it'll be quite close though so if we just look here you see 780 you think oh it's more than enough but as this fills you'll see this temperature continuing to drop and even at 510 celsius on the tank it's still eventually dropped above uh, below 700k i'm just hopeful that right now it won't it's, it's slowing down already which is a good sign um we just don't want it to drop below 700 before the pressure rises above 800 other than that that's pretty straightforward so let's skip forwards and hope that's the case and it failed oh and let's take it up of 800k pa and let's just see whether 699 will do it oh 698 i don't think it will i think we're gonna have to refill this furnace again let's get it 750 oh so you'll see i need another three or four degrees on top even all the way down as it's filling it continues to drop and it's still doing it right now even though i've insulated this as best as i can it's not enough unfortunately so we're gonna have to just close this off heat this back up again and uh, let me just dump that heat this back up again to oh that's dropping quite significantly now because all the gas is recirculating but i'm gonna have to take that up to maybe 530 or something like that maybe 535 and then that should be safe enough for Electrum, hopefully. Well, at least it gives give enough overhead to fill the furnace. That much is for certain. So while something like, I don't know, um, 530 degrees might, uh, C, that is, might make it okay from the tank side of things, I took it all the way up to 550 C. And then you can see now it's almost up to 800 kPa, and we're still at 719. So that hopefully should be enough. Yep, there we go. Pull the handle. We get Electrum. Shut this off. Shut this off and pull this handle and we should be pretty much done. That doesn't take very long at all to drain. It's going to be pulled out by the atmospheric system up here, this one, and correctly filtered back around to our system. There it is, it's done. So we've got 40 Gs of Electrum, which we can then drop into our little uh, electro print here and get the new automated hydroponic system. So let's just pop that in there, print this off. And that's going to take a while. <laughs> let's go forwards. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got with this kit. And let's... Oh, wow. Okay, so that's not a small kit at all. <laughs> Looks more like a, like a server rack or something. So we've got power inputs on the left there. And we've got some inputs and outputs on the right. So let's just try and put this down somewhere. And then we'll see what we can do. Uh, I'm probably going to need more room, aren't I? Uh, oh, let's just grab... I've, but oh, I don't have uh, things under there, so let's just bring it around here instead. For now, at least. And uh, let's get uh, this pry tool. There we go. That should do the job. And let's pop this down, say, here. Okay, interesting. Uh, I have a roller cover. <laughs> I can't do anything with it. All right. Ah, okay. Interesting. Which while there's a roller cover, maybe that's just a model thing. Okay, so we've got what looks like grow lights in there, so we shouldn't need necessarily any sort of um, sunlight. We can do this independently. And we've got a space for a plant. You only get one slot for a plant, by the way. This is not something that you can put four in, like the bay that we've got inside this, this room at the moment. Ooh, I need to turn that back on. Uh, so that is that. We do have a power input. We've got an atmospheric input. Okay, that's going to be interesting. And on the back, we've got liquid input. So this is where our water is going to go in. So it seems re fairly reasonable that we can just actually connect water to this thing and put it in. It doesn't matter really where we put it. 
What I wonder, though, is it doesn't really say what happened with the atmosphere, because I could just get, I don't know, some some canister of uh, CO2 or something like that. And in fact, is that canister of CO2? Can I actually tell? Is it actually updated so I can tell with this now? Canister... That is actually a canister of CO2. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I get lucky. Um, but we could essentially put CO2 and we just need a uh, sort of... Um, it's probably going to be in here, isn't it? We need the storage for that. So we'll use the new menu just to be able to see things visually. I do like this so much. And um, ooh, one other thing I wanted to mention, by the way, I'm not going to do it in this episode or anything, but I was considering using lots of wall coolers instead of um, wall heaters. And just wondering if we just go over here for a second. Remember, I was going to heat the things up for Electrum. I was looking up at this tower that I'm going to be doing for dragging in atmosphere. And I was thinking, you know, if instead of putting, you know, active vents on this like this, like I showed at the end of an episode a few episodes ago, if I put wall coolers on there, maybe it would take heat from the atmosphere, which is essentially infinite, and push it into the whatever's in the pipe. And the pipe can be then connected to our hot tank, and for the most part hidden inside this block. And then during daytime, when the temperature is up to about 20 degrees C or so, uh, turn them all on <laughs> and see what happens. If anyone's done that, let me know in the comments below. Like, let other people know in the comments below, because that might be... because. Uh, then what effectively we'll be doing, we'll be adding heat directly to the interior of these pipes. We don't have this kind of room like this that is a sort of a, a sort of proxy heater, if you like, for the pipes. We'd just be doing it directly. I thought it would be an interesting idea. In any case, back to uh, back to the hydroponics. So in here, what I need that recipe. I needed the not the tank connector. What is it? Canister storage, something like that. Canister storage, there we go. So uh, that only needs iron, which we've got plenty of. Okay, it may get ejected from this. And um, yep, yep, there it goes, ejected as normal. And uh, we're going to need a bit of pipe. So let's just grab that. I do like this menu. It's it's so nice by comparison. There we go. Uh, just one or two would will do us. I don't think we need much more than that. Okay, and then on the back here, let's just put this in as a corner piece and put our storage. Will you auto? You will auto. Good. And I want to make sure I can see that so it's the right way. There we go. So slot three doesn't tell me what that slot's for. That'd be nice if I knew. Well, there is one export slot and one import slot. So, where are the slots? I assume that's the import slot then. And this is presumably the export slot. So let's just grab canister and pop that in there. And let's turn this on. And it needs a power connection, which we've got a nice connection right there. So let's just drop that off as well. And... Uh, let's just grab our snips. And the idea with this is that it's fully automatable. Uh, if that's even a word, which it probably isn't. But uh, let's give this a go and see what we get to. So it's saying there's an error. And we got a plant button and a clear button. So uh, we need something on the input. And we're going to need... Oh, that's actually connected to the water. Whoops. Uh, did I just input water into this thing? Probably did. Um, one second, let's just check. <laughs> is it taking stuff out of this? It has taken stuff out of this. Yeah, okay, let's hope it's not uh, hopelessly corrupt. But uh, let's just uh, reconnect things. I actually, hmm, water I only have in the large size with the tank connector. Let's just, where's I put that, where I put that pipe? Let's put it here. And for argument's sake, let's put it like this. And then one more piece like this. And then we'll print another one of these. Yeah, we're going to need another, another canister storage, aren't we? So it's up near the top. Okay, we'll get that going. There we go. And 
Again, we'll just use auto rotate. Okay, this should be the atmosphere side. Okay, and it's got an atmosphere and it's got power. Good. It's going to need some water, presumably, then in this storage input. So I would assume that the, uh, the all that all that uh, atmosphere just went into this pipe section. Let's just see if that pipe section is full. Uh, yes, it has CO2 in there. OK, so let's just remove that and place it back down again. Hopefully then it will stay empty. Let's give this a go. Yes, it's not liking it. OK. Is it now empty? Yep, it's empty. Good. That's uh, what we need. Then I just need some water for this. I'm going to need another one of those kinds of storages. <laughs> Um, let's just, ah, I've got, I need to go and get some more iron produced, but that should be fine here. There we go. And how much is a canister? Yeah, that's another five iron. So I'll reuse something else. There'll probably be something hanging around I can reuse. Um, let's see. Uh, what was I going to do with this? I want water. So is this the water? It is the water, 351 moles. And then around here somewhere, I have port, hopefully, I can fill, fill this into. And it needs another pipe section. Why do I have pipe on me? It's quite unusual. I usually have at least one or two pieces, but other than that, yeah, we'll be OK. Um, let's grab this pipe. Just one section will do. And I'll just use this to grab a canister from somewhere. I think I've got uh, canisters in the, one of the lockers. Okay, and here we go. Let's face this towards us. There we go. Tank fill. Yeah, that's where I wanted it. And I think I've got uh, a canister in here. Here, canister, what's in you? Uh, let's grab this. That's also CO2. Okay, let's just dump this into our system using the dump canister. Uh, that's not emptying because this isn't triggering, probably because it's not. Yeah, we'll just use the other method. Open this up. And it should just bring us back to, I guess, well, it won't be vacuum, will it? Because, uh, oh, I'm still on the canister. Oh, <laughs> it won't be vacuum because we're not in a vacuum. It's uh, it's just going to be the atmosphere. So let's just close that up. Yeah, it's down to 2.7 kPa. I don't have a, a pump on this. I could ideally do with a pump at some point to do that. But for now, um, let's just go and fill this mostly with water. And hopefully it'll work with some water. 130 kPa. There's four moles of water in there. Let's just put a little bit more. Yeah, it's just pretty, it's just equalized. Again, I'll need another uh, another regulator here on this one if I want to do anything more than just taking a you know nominal amount. So for now, let's see whether that will do. Okay, so that's everything there, and. Now what we need to do is think about inserting a plant and then harvesting it. Now in here it was rather hot um, because I turned this system off to deal with uh, heating my furnace so I didn't lose too much battery power. Is it back down to a reasonable value? It's at 310 now so that's uh, what 37 degrees? Should be fine in here. Uh, I just want uh, one of the plants that's all. I've got some in one of those crates out there but I actually just want wheat. Um, just to compare this to what we already have. Yeah, it's a little bit hot in here. That's fine, though. So uh, I just want to take 15 wheat and split one, two, just so I've got some in my inventory. There we go. Cycle to the exterior. Down we go to near vacuum. Well, vacuum and then not as the doors open. And let's see if we can just feed this in. So um, I'm just going to feed 
Can we fit into two? What happens? It takes two. So it's got an import slot which we can put whatever we want into. So uh, now we have two buttons, as you can see, a plant and a clear button. As I said before, we press plant. Uh, there we go. So the wheat lacks hydration, has no atmosphere. And there we go. So the wheat is growing. We've just got atmosphere connected. And let's have a look now. Yeah, well, I think what's ha what I was expecting to happen is happening. CO2 is being converted into O2 in this canister, which makes this actually so much more convenient, uh, even if we can completely automate this. For example, you can now think of this as a block which converts CO2 into O2. You don't ever harvest it, you just leave ferns in there or something like that. So you get free O2 and free CO, uh, CO2 from the atmosphere, obviously on Mars. And um, that is pretty good. All you need to do is make sure it's refilled. So in another episode, we're going to think about how we keep this uh, supplied with CO2. But remember, that same line is going to have O2 pushed back into it by this by this unit. OK, that's pretty good. Also, it's going to take uh, you know water from the back. And that is down to one more, presumably because it's gone into the pipe. Yes, it has. I'll need to monitor that as well. And of course, we will get um, get something here. You'll note I don't have to deal with any atmospherics. OK, <laughs> that makes that makes a building like this not as useful once you're able to make um, Electrum. And I think it what else did it require? Um, let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, portable hydroponics. No, it was automated hydroponics, wasn't it? I think it was near the top. Oh, no, it wasn't on this machine. That's why. Um, whoops. Um, I just need to make sure I select something just in case this still has that bug where if you select, if you, select a, if you don't select a recipe once you've brought up the drop down list, it bugs out the next machine you actually go to. But I think that's actually well, hopefully solved with this drop down list now. But if not, don't worry. Now, automated hydroponics. So what does it actually need? Uh, steel, Electrum, Solder uh, are the three alloys, and we've made all of them fairly early on without much of a trouble. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of caught between whether we should have a bay like that or not. I think what I may well do is just start building the rest of the base around it. We'll come on to topics about automating this, but while I'm doing it, I'll continue building this, because the same system we have set up on the program over here uh, right about here, heating and cooling, and then, you know, an extension to this to add uh, filtering of the atmosphere, you know, oxygen, carbon dioxide, etc., is the same kind of system that we'd use in a full base pressurization. It wouldn't be um, keeping things highly CO2, it would be more breathable stuff, so we'd have to think about nitrogen as well, but um, it, that's sort of a replacement, I think, for this bay. So I think I'm quite interested in that, to be honest, now that this is available. This is brilliant, though. I do like the model. I like the way it looks. It's uh, sort of like a vending machine. It's at stage three already, so we have wheat growing. And I remember I put two in, so I wanted to see whether if... Oh, no, there it is. That It's opened again. So we still have one wheat we can take out and presume it's going to eject from this. However, it's not going to eject from that until it's fully grown and we press the, one of these will be a harvest button, I think. And I think that's it says clear, but I think that means harvest or it will change to harvest, presumably when it hits stage four. Uh, while I'm actually doing that, however, what I did actually want to check is how much power is this thing using? Let's switch those around. Uh, we've got the network analyzer in here now and let's take a look. So hydroponic station. No, it's the automated hydroponics. Uh, which will be in here somewhere, hopefully. Uh, 100 watts. OK, uh, that's fine. I'm quite happy with 100 watts. OK. No problem at all, in fact. So stage three, let's skip forward to when it's finished growing and let's see what happens at that point. I don't think it's going to be automated. I think we're going to have to sense it ourselves uh, with electronics or a program. And what we'll then do is have, I think, we're going to have a bin just like the alloy, the not the alloy, the arc furnace bin, just like this. 
uh, whereby we're going to dump in a plant and we are just going to say go. And then our circuitry and our electronics is just going to add them one at a time. And when this hits harvest stage four, and I assume that's going to be on an attribute of this in some way from this data port back here, we'll have to have a look. I don't think the wiki is updated yet. It's got very, very new. But once it's showing stage four, then we tell it to hit harvest. We hit the harvest button essentially remotely. That pops out into, I don't know, uh, it could be a loop, actually. That'd be an interesting one. Or indeed a vending machine or something like that, because uh, if we're going, if we build one of these for each each crop type, and I, there's no reason why we shouldn't, we just shouldn't need to mix crops. Well, not at the right temperature. Interesting. So, uh, what is that a function of? Is that purely the atmosphere around this? That's interesting. So we will need to put this in some kind of pressurized area. Not a problem because we can just dump it in that bay. <laughs> you know, there's no need to to worry about that. That's straightforward. But yeah, uh, once we get to the last stage, we would put this into a container of some kind, vending machine, and pull out of the other side of the container back into the input slot. Or even we could just use slots in uh, in ducts or something along those kind of lines. Ideally, probably through some kind of stacker, maybe. Um, and we'll we'll see about how what we actually do for that one. And then over time, what's going to happen is that once we set it up correctly, assuming it can be set up that way, um, it will um, it will naturally grow that crop. So we'll start off with one wheat and we'll end up with going to two and then three. And then unfortunately, it's not exponential. So we, we don't have machines to take it to one, two, four, eight, etc. But for each crop that we put into this thing, we should get two out and we can just leave it passively growing. And it's killed the plant. <laughs> now, that's fine because uh, we're going to be putting this inside, I think. But uh, yeah, get an idea. You're definitely going to need to want to put it in an atmosphere that... Um, <laughs> that the plant will find conducive to growth. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this episode. Just the introduction to this. Next episode's probably going to be the automation of this. Uh, let me just take this back out and put it, put it in my backpack. <laughs> Keep it nice and safe. Uh, this thing is killing plants at the moment, but uh, other than that, let's turn it off. So yeah, we'll need to hook up both of the inputs. Uh, well, yeah, both of the inputs and filter through this pull the oxygen out. That should actually be relatively straightforward, though, because that we just need to pull through, um, you know, a unit like this and when there's too much oxygen. So we, it shouldn't be much of a, a problem to deal with and we'll be pretty good. So if you like the episode, feel free to give it a like, a subscribe, a share, as you would normally expect. You can follow me on Twitter at Gradus if you want notifications that way or indeed, you know, subscribe, as I said. And uh, of course, as always, guys, thanks a lot for watching. And I think we're going to be doing lots more with this in the coming episode or two. So, yeah, maybe you all can try it and we'll we'll see what we all get to with far to this new machine, um, the automated hydroponics unit. Great. Thanks for watching.